Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. Irit here from CSM Practice. We are at the Pulse Conference 2022, day number two. And I have Sri, founder of uh, Rocket Lane, the number one onboarding software in the world, sponsoring these videos. And I also have Bobby Cooper, who's the Chief Customer Officer at Tapcart. Tapcart. And so you actually had a wonderful session. Can you tell us a little bit about what the session was about? Yeah, so I talked about like the evolution of the customer success team moving from a reactive to a proactive and then onto a predictive model. And basically the things you need to do to implement to your team, the data you need to look at, the playbooks you need to put in place to get more data and intelligence behind the success of your customers. Talked a lot about what to look at and what not to look at. Right. I think a lot of us obsess around things we shouldn't be obsessing with. I think some of the times we obsess too much about the churn of our customers and not enough about the success of our customers, which is what brings more loyalty. In customer success, we're all about bringing loyalty for customers along the entire customer journey. And it's all about delivering an outcome, making sure the customers are getting outcomes throughout the implementation period, throughout their entire life cycle and, and on, and, and making true advocates. Absolutely. So I just want to break it down a little bit so that everybody that's watching this video can get a little bit of context. So Bobby here actually works for this company that has a very wide range of types of customers. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of unique because you either have like small mom and pop shops or very big companies. Mm -hmm. I think that creates some challenge in around like what is the outcome that they want to define. So did you define the outcomes based on segmentation or types of business that they're in? Like how did you tackle that? Yeah. So, so it's interesting and you could say they're different in some ways, but other ways they're not like it. So they're all e-commerce brands, mm -hmm. but they can be very different from like very large e-commerce brands like Pier One Imports. Right or down to these small mom and entrepreneurs that are starting an e-commerce brand like literally in their basement. But for the most part, what they want is the same outcome. They want growth in their business. And so, but how they measure that growth can be very different. We may have a customer come in and like what their goal is, is to sell $10,000 a month of their hand-stitched rhinestone hats. Or you have like a, a brand like Aviator Nation rocking their shirts right now, where they're a fast growing brand in Los Angeles, where they're selling millions and millions and millions of dollars of their clothes. So an outcome for them, like if they're not producing a million dollars a month in the app, like it's not successful. You can't just put like a dollar amount to it, but you have to measure success relative to what the brand's goals are. Do they most have the same goals in during onboarding? And then maybe you're probably curious about this too. How long does onboarding take with this type of business and, and software that you're yeah, offering? Yeah, goals definitely change during onboarding. A lot of the smaller e-commerce startups, they're very cash conscious. They're very, very conscious of their spend. So that getting that first time to value is extremely important. Mm -hmm. They know if they're going to be spending $1,000 a month with Tapcart, that they need to start producing. They're going to be paying us a thousand bucks a month. They need to start producing and selling their merchandise really to make that make up that margin. Time to first value is incredibly important. So they're going to want to implement the app really fast, get it out, run their marketing place so they can start selling. However, larger brands, they will come in with a little bit more of a holistic mm -hmm. approach to how the app plays in their entire business model they may sign up for us and it may be three or four months till they actually launch. For example, it's August right now. We have customers signing up now that have no intention on launching their app until a few weeks before Black Friday because the app is actually a Black Friday strategy that they're doing. So we really have to get to know why your customers bought you in the first place so you know like how to measure the outcomes. You have hundreds, thousands of customers sometimes, right? In any given... Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah, I mean, probably on board roughly about 100 customers a month. So yeah. I'm just curious for these larger customers, mm -hmm. are there cases where you're replacing like something that they built internally or Ooh, they had another app question. already and then you need to match up to or prove that, hey, you get better conversion using Champ Card? 
So yes and no. The problem is not, we, we actually don't convert a lot of people that have existing apps over. We do, but the penetration of the e-commerce mobile app space is actually very little. Most of our customers, the decision is not tap cart versus another app. It's app or no app. It's app or just focus on web or mobile web. So yes, we have all the data that shows mobile apps convert at a much higher rate. It retains your customers at a much higher rate than web and mobile web. You're going to get higher order values and just more repeat sessions. More people are going to visit your app because you own a piece of real estate on their phone, on their mobile phone. Literally, their brand is in your pocket at all. Your brand is like in your customer's pocket at any given time. So it sounds like you have a very clear ROI. Are these the metrics you're using to showcase that the onboarding was successful? What are you tracking during onboarding? ROI is a big metric that we track, and we'll just look at it in gross sales. In the e-commerce world, we call it GMV, basically gross monthly value. So yeah, we'll really document GMV targets, like revenue targets that our customers want to do. I'm going to spend a thousand bucks a month for you guys. I need to start making ten thousand dollars a month in sales, and I need to make it quick. So, making sure that our team internally, that the customers' team, that they're sticking to this onboarding plan because they have a goal to be live in three weeks. We need to make sure they stick to that plan to get them live in three weeks. How are you ensuring, besides that the onboarding is successful, how else are you ensuring focusing on value and outcome? Is it that ROI, what was the, like the main takeaway that yeah. you wanted to impart on the audience in your session? Yeah, so we do use Gainsight, and we, we actually pump a lot of these ROI and value metrics into Gainsight. So on our customer health score, we actually have it broken down into three different sections. We actually have an ROI section, we have a product utilization section, and then we have a customer engagement section. Mm -hmm. And so those are the things that we're looking at. We know that during all these phases of the customer journey, the customer has to find an ROI. They have to be getting the revenue, and we measure that in a few different ways. They have to have good product adoption. The two biggest features we look at there are push notifications sent, uh, like a certain cadence of push notifications, as well as how integrated their system is. Are they integrating with other business systems within their Shopify, within, a, within other, other platforms? And are they engaging? Are they engaging in our content? Are they engaging with the CSM? Is there a, a good sentiment from the CSM? Are they engaging with the voice of customer tools, et cetera? I was also curious, there's a technical launch plan, right? Mm -hmm. Which is to get them to go live with them. Is there also like some sort of a plan you give them around, hey, make sure when you're launching on the marketing front, you have all these things checked out? Yeah, so we kind of have our checklist that our onboarders follow. It's pretty well thought out. There is a lot of administrative work, creating accounts with your Apple developer account, your Google developer account, making sure your business is structured in a way that Apple's going to accept you on the Apple App Store because there's a lot of restrictions there. So we have a lot of administrative there. The next part of our implementation phase is really the design element of the app. We found that design has a, like a really high correlation with customer revenue. If customers constantly iterating their design, the revenue is going to keep going up. If their design goes stale, it goes down. So since we found that had such good correlation with revenue, we actually hire, we actually have three like dedicated graphic designers on our implementation wow. team. So during the implementation phase, they actually get a dedicated graphic designer that goes in, creates custom designs for the app. And, and that's a critical part of that design phase. The next phase of implementation is all around best practices. Because you talk about that go-to-market launch plan. It's a mobile e-commerce app. It's a sales channel. That go live, that launch plan has to be key. And we just have a really set of proven, tried and true best practices on how to be successful in the e-commerce world. So we make sure we share that knowledge. I'm just wondering, like a hundred customers a month, you can't have enough CSMs to just communicate all of that with them. So how do you do that? Do you just do email campaigns? Do you have these micro videos that Skilljar talked about yesterday? How do you, what in-app messages, all of the above? Like, what yeah, a little bit of everything. Again, yeah. we heavily utilize Journey Orchestrator within Gainsight. So we do automate that. We, right now we're doing, looks at about 100 a month, and that's with only about four onboarders. So, so they're, they're cranking through them pretty good. Our average time to live overall 
is about 22 days. But if customers come with like a lot of this administrative stuff already done, we can get a customer live in a matter of a few days. They know um, their graphic design yeah. and the plan and the assets that they need to go into that yep. app. Yeah. Yeah. We, we can get it done pretty good. But as far as communication. Yeah. Few, tell few me about the communication channels. Like, yeah. Especially with the mom and pop, they're not always going to open their emails. Yeah. And, like, Communication's key, especially because we're, we're global. Like we sell customers. Our second largest market is in Australia, the UK, like all throughout EMEA is like really big. Some of our largest customers in Spain and, and you and know, all UK. of your team is here in the US. We have a few people in Canada, but otherwise everybody's North America. Wow. So how do you do for time zone? Right? We do kind of strategize our CSM team where we will have our West Coast team based in California that's kind of managing. California as well as APAC because you can kind of fit that into like an eight hour window right there. And then we have people on the East Coast that are coming East Coast and then EMEA and you can kind of send there. So what's the communication channel with customers, especially the smaller ones? You know, they don't always have like Zoom and like what? What's interesting is our customers, like they all communicate differently depending on what country they're in. So like we'll communicate with our customers however they want to communicate best. Some customers were on Zoom calls, some were on Google Meet calls, some it's phone calls, email, Slack, text, WhatsApp. However we can best communicate with the customer, we'll do it. Wow. That's something to think about because I don't think a lot of companies do it. They're like, oh, we have Zoom and Mm -hmm. that's what you need to use. But I think it's really smart to ask Mm -hmm. the customer, where can I meet you? And then make it comfortable for them because that's part of a customer experience. Yeah. Meet your customers where they're at. Where they are. You know, meet your customers where you're at. Yeah, we're building our community right now at TapCard as well, and, and we're trying to get customers to come to us. But I think also a big part of that community is you need to go out and find them. You need to go be where they're at, be a little more proactive that way. Yeah, this was awesome. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your practices. And I think it's really challenging when you have so many customers that are so small, and how do you meet them where they are? I don't think that's an easy challenge to solve. But I think you're doing all the right things because you told me offline that your churn rate is nearly zero, which is extraordinary. Or we're we're, we're sub 1%. So that's sub 1%. I mean, this is a product led growth strategy. Mm -hmm. That's really remarkable. So I want to congratulate you on that. And I hope everybody who's listening and going to copy some stuff from you because um, it obviously works. Great. Thank you. Thanks so much. And guys, I'll see you in the next video.